are live. Yeah, right. Cool. We are live. Let me put my microphone correctly. Great. Hello. What's up, guys? How are you? Get out of the way. Ah, um, welcome to another stream. Welcome to another cool stream. Let me just uh, move my windows, set up my desktop, and do all that stuff that I do. Hey, Mary Boy, what's up? So, if, if you guys didn't uh, see my tweet uh, yesterday, I couldn't uh, stream yesterday because my my internet was basically non-existent. Uh, it was uh, completely gone. So I had to do the stream today. Hey, Bob, what's up? <laughs> Don't shoot down, stay with us. Hey, uh, Mahmoud. And Adrian, what's up? What's up, guys? Yeah, we're gonna do some backs today because uh, yesterday I couldn't do it. My freaking internet was uh, non-existent, so I didn't have a connection. Let me turn on the light because it's a little bit dark here. Yeah, that's better. Cool. Um, yeah, so no internet. Duh. But yeah, today we can do some uh, some internetation stuffy thingy. Codinizationing. So yeah, my my internet was totally down. I didn't have a connection the whole day. They had issues. Uh, called the company. They were doing some stuff uh, to fix it. Uh, they fixed it like uh, at night. Late at night was when I got uh, internet back. Uh, I have another router that is a really poor uh connection it's really really bad but at least uh helps me send emails and not be completely uncommunicated but yeah uh hey orlando what's up emmanuel time to cry don't cry dude i'm trying to make i'm trying to make this uh more friendly for you guys <laughs> uh mes huh hello mes uh, Adrian, it, it, it's really stable, but I think they were changing some stuff. They were updating something or whatever. And, uh, and basically it was an issue and they, they had to, uh, I don't know why they had to do, but we didn't have a connection, but yeah, my internet is pretty, pretty stable when it's up. It's pretty rare that I have issues. It's, it's really, really rare. All right, so let's start with this because we have a bunch of stuff to cover. Uh, Bex part two. And I'm gonna do a grid. And a pig. Just type pig. Yeah, the big ones to be a little bit higher. Doesn't have a translate. Attribute wrangle. All right, let's see if my editor is working today. It should be. Cool, editor's working. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, there we go. 
I was just setting up some stuff, guys, but now I'm now I'm set up. Uh, I should be making the font bigger, right? Let's type some some stuff. Yeah, the font is really small. Uh, settings, settings, settings. Let's make this. I was I did this like forty last time. Can make it fifty. Yeah, that's that's big enough. All right, so. Ah. Hey, Martin. Saludos, Argentina, Martin. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, I had the page open here. Here it is. So let's go for day three. Day three, it's gonna be today. So let's put some comments here. Day, day, day three. So if you if you guys don't know, I'm using this plugin that I, I have told you about before, but you can see if I save here, it shows here the uh, whatever I type. If I put uh, color, it's gonna be equal to the normals like we learned before. And if I save, it just saves here. So it's just way better to have this editor here that it's much uh, better editor. It even has completion for uh for for functions and stuff uh, so you can see what you're trying to type uh, of course you can really see here because it's really huge right now but if you use it on your own you will see like exactly how it uh, works you can say I, it tells you the file name so it gives you hints and stuff which is better and uh all right so <sighs> Can see my screen again. Why? Oh, I don't know why I did. Uh, sorry for that. So yeah, I was saying that uh, I'm using this this plugin that saves whatever you have here. If you guys don't know, let me just show you what that is is called uh, Houdini expression editor external editor ah oh, no external editor uh, this one yeah it's expression editor so it's basically a plugin Houdini expression editor that just uh, gives you a way to use an external editor and just basically refreshes uh, so it's pretty cool to use this, uh, you just install. This is free. If you want to donate to this guy, it's pretty cool. Donate to him, uh, and then what it gives you is uh, when you you select the the the, uh, the editor you want from here, and then when you right click here, say external expression editor, launches your external editor, and then refreshes whatever you type here. Like let's say. Again, a CD equals the normals and you save and it refreshes here and it refreshes here. So you can see it's, it's cool. Uh, welcome to the, okay. Don't show this version. No thingy. Goodbye. All right. So let's see, where's my, uh, lesson for today. Uh, Hopefully you worked the lessons for yesterday. So make some waves with P scale. I totally forgot about what we did the other day because it was actually a week ago for me. Uh, so P, forget the semicolon and then uh, D is gonna be equal to channel. You can see it, it is really helpful to have this kind of a editor scale. And the, I never use the included <laughs> editor in the wrangle for, for coding. It's just too simple. Uh, sign of D. 
okay if we do that we get some squashed uh, pig let's pull this down I don't know I need to reconfigure my desktop or something to see everything at once let's oh I, I supposed to have a switch here instead of a merge right So we have some waves, but are they too big, too small? Oh, yeah, I know what's happening. We need to click here to have this guy created. Uh, let's give it more density. And let's put five here. Whoa, that's big. All right, so that's what we're doing right now. Uh, let's bring the editor. I'm gonna put this up. Where's the other one? This one I should. I'm not gonna be able to, do I? I want to, oh, why do I have this? particle stingy here close now I want I try I'm trying to keep it up but I'm not gonna be able to right no it's not gonna let me unless I show the system toolbars and I click that and then I hide the system toolbars there we go all right, so joy of Bex three, we have that. It's saying then, uh, I did something weird. Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, it works. It works with any editor. Editor you want to editor any editor you want to assign to that. Orlando, so it just open whatever editor you want to launch. Uh, if you don't view the wireframes enable, it looks unshaded. This is because the wrangle don't update the normals. Let's see if it's true. It it's kind of not true. Uh, a trick to have the normals first adding the normal to the point. Uh, let's see a normal to the point at a point times the normal I actually see it work I sorry wrong window if we go to the smooth shaded save this yeah now it looks unshaded Uh, this pushes each point along is normal like an inflate effect for a pixel to control the amount scale and Okay Which is basically recreating the picks up which uh, I don't like to do stuff like that But let's uh, change to the pig Switch to the pig and The pig it's so weird. So let's comment this code And uh, let's add a parameter like it's doing there. The call it push. Save that and click here and create the parameter. And now we can push the normals. So yeah, that's there. Oh crap. I'm in the way of the video. Sorry of, of the code crap. That sucks. Let me make my head smaller. 
put it somewhere. We're here. Yay, in my head. I'm floating. <laughs> Sorry for that. So just basically seeing that uh, this code, uh, it's adding to the position it's setting the normals. So basically, if you see the normals, it's just basically saying this point is gonna be like, let's say, let's select that point. That point to that position, to the position of this point, you're gonna add this direction. And then when you control multiply that by a push, you can just see that the point just moves along the normal. So that's basically exactly what that is doing. It's just pushing the point along the normal. So it kind of, when you do it, when you see the whole thing, it seems like it's inflating or something, but that's exactly what it's happening. It's just moving the point along the normal. That's all it's doing. Nothing fancy there. So let's make this smaller and put my head down here. There, okay. I can fit there. All right, as this in the right position. I don't want you guys to miss stuff. There you go. Okay, there's limited space here, but it's good. We can maybe make this smaller. Okay, so it's pushing that. In terms of the waves, rather than use the push slider, we use the sign. Uh, okay, so we bring this code back and instead of pushing uh, the point with the sign here, we're going to push them with the, uh, I'm going to use this for the points using the sign attribute we had from before. So I'm guessing that's going to be ripples all over the place and we save that. And now we have a freaking mess here of a pig. Let's see if we click play. That's what's happening there. But I think it's too much so we can scale it down with this guy, right? Yeah, we had this for that. Whoa, that's weird okay so uh, this is controlling the size of the waves actually not the intensity uh, so this can also be controlled by a slider to control the height of the waves yeah, that's what I was thinking. So let's multiply it by another channel that it's gonna be called. Whoa, well, I'm cutting up here and I shouldn't be doing that. I need to go down here. Times channel. Wow. Moon caps. How is it gonna be called? This is gonna be called wave. Shiked. Don't forget the that guy. Create the channel by clicking there. And now we are, have more control. See now it's a little bit less intense. Uh, we can you can uh, bring Tommy if that's what. Uh, the example is using takes a while to create Tommy. All right, Tommy, let's use Tommy here. And now we are using Tommy as the example. <laughs> that it's totally messed up, dude. It's just wrong. Uh, let's, uh, yeah. Let's put it into low res so we don't have that much geometry. Doesn't matter. It's working all right. It's working all right. 
Uh, poor Tommy, that the full height is good for the grid, but too high for the fall. Tommy, uh, use the transport some to scale him up up to four. Let's scale Tommy to four, as it says there. So now he gets skinny head and skinny pants. And I think the push is not working anymore. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Uh, others uses the language introduce clamp. Take out sign for now, go back to grid, map to the PY. Uh, let's go back to the grid. And it says that we should go to the PY. Uh, like they did before. But uh, just send D. And uh, float this length of the. We already had that there. Not sure why I'm trying to do now math. Maybe we shouldn't be animating this. We had an inverted cone, yeah? It says that we had an inverted cone. You cannot Subtract, multiply, divide to change the height and placement of this cone. Let's see. D multiply 0 0.2 minus 10. Mm, save. Whoa, where is it? Uh, that is weird. Minus 1. No, that's what I multiply it by minus 1. And add 10. Well, wrong editor. I need more space here. This is just too small. Okay. Nope. Day three. Save that. Where is my. Okay, so now it's inverted. Uh, can you use a shortcut here? Just type D, which is implicit. Minus D. Okay, so it says that instead of just multiplying this guy by one, we can just uh, put the minus sign here and it's basically the same, which yes, it is. It's basically the same thing, flipping a direction like that. Uh, if we just want a section of this, you can use clamp. All right, we want just a section of this, let's use clamp. I'm not sure where this is going, but okay. It's, it's just telling us what the clamp function does. All right, so we have that, or we can invert the D, as it's saying there, and I got actually nothing. Let me remove these lines. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's, oh, I got a half space here, but still, I have nothing. Actually, the space came after. Okay. Why am I not having anything here? Anybody see an error there? I can see this is clamping D and I have nothing. That works, but not that. Cause he says that that's more useful, but that's just flat for me. Uh, weird, weird, but uh, okay. So, the other way is using a fit function, 
fit yeah you can use the fit function uh the one two two and one two two okay one two two all right now we have a little um like a rivet there because we're clamping this is the the we're basically saying uh, the the minimum value the all minimum value is one and the old maximum value is two but it's weird that it's fitting to one to two to two whatever uh you can take the graph as it looks when clamp between one and two and then scale it out so it stretches to see between zero and ten yeah so basically this whatever is doing right now we can scale it from zero or map it if you understand it better like that so now we're kind of just maxing this value so basically this is the value one down here and this is two but then we take those from two to ten over here so basically the the, the old values are this and the new values are uh, that. And this should be at the uh, grid. Yeah, that's at zero completely. So just mapping the values. So basically what was on one, now is at zero. What was on two, now is at 10. That's what it's saying there. Uh, or do combinations of fit and clamp uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Okay, let's do a combination of fit and clamp. Let's leave that there. And it says D fit a D between one and three. And goes from one to zero. And D clamp uh, D from 0 0.5 to 1 and then we pass that to the position y and we have this little rivet thingy so if we comment lines you can kind of see what's happening here you can see this is mapping from 1 to three it's mapping the one is living at one and three is lowering it down because it was like that so we're lowering those points that are at position three lowering those to zero and then we clamp that a little bit more so we basically raise the ones that are at zero to point five like that so that is what's happening there and as always set some sliders so we can set some sliders for the uh, let me copy this so we don't just type this basically just creating some sliders to control this guy so I'm just gonna copy that to make it quicker quicker click the here for the sliders and we don't see the sliders because there's a bunch of sliders over here so now you can kind of see what's happening there okay that it's good a uh, little screen capture of uh, Matt doing that thingy uh, okay exercises all right seems like we're done with day one I mean day three cool all right so let's see what the exercise is Try and incorporate clam into the above setup. See if you can make it do something interesting. The above setup is using just fit here. 
which is this code. Let me make this guy bigger for now. So we have this code and let's say we want to clamp, let's say clamp uh, D. We want to clamp it with some uh, channels as well. Maybe create them up here or after the fit. We can create the channels there. Uh, float uh, min and clamp. Oh, I won't need to. No, float clamp min equals channel uh, clamp min. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to call this chain max to clamp max just put the channels here clamp mean clamp clamp max do that create the channels and now we have that we're trying to just clamping whatever we had there before, which is not really that interesting. But okay, that's the homework. All right, what else can we do here? Uh, make it, make it do uh, set p based on waves generated from sine d, but see what happens. If you leave the clamp the before sign before after sign or both after and uh, before and before and after sign. Whew, that was a mouthful. Set P based on waves generated from sign D. We already had that there. Here. So let's uh, do that. Waves from sine D. Let's uh, remove this guy, I think. And and let's remove that part as well. Let me do another line because that line was. I want to leave it there. So let's see. You know, P is going to be equal plus equals to sine D. Save and see what happens if we play. There is no time because we need to do this time. Well, that looks weird. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. That looks interesting. It's like it's just shrinking. Cool. All right, that looks that looks weird, but cool. All of these values are doing nothing now. Okay, so let's see what it does now. Yeah, it's kind of a disappearing there. Okay, so now this it says that see what happens if you do clamp before and after. So let's see if we clamp it here. So let's see do sign. It's gonna be equal to sign. I mean, D is gonna be equal to sine D plus equals or times e plus equals. And then just put D here. So we're clamping it first. And it's complaining about something. 
cannot uh, there oh there's a semicolon missing there let's see what happened here it's not doing that much let's multiply this see what happens same so we're clamping before the sign and we get dark uh, I don't know I don't know exactly what the uh, expected result will be here but looks like that let's uh, go to the pig see what happens with the pig <laughs> look at the pig it just shifts shifts the position whoop whoop let's use set on Tommy looks more interesting in these guys Shoop. does that that's what it does for now uh, number three waves that start from two points and mix with each other waves that start from two points and mix with each other okay okay let's try that oh, let's try that you guys are being kind of quiet uh, okay let me see let's just do it in another wrangle because this one is kind of crowded already so I'm going to get this part and do another wrangle. Whoa. Uh, let's uh, expression, external editor. There we go. Let's move this guy for now. Let's see, we have, we want, do, 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 do. let me delete all these things and let's leave that and this and say, okay, let's uh, go to the wave. So the wave, needs to start in two different points so right now let's add the parameters that it's expecting let's uh, re the little spare parameters and add them again just to have the ones that we need not too high like that all right, so the one starts here. So I don't really remember what we did. Times zero point five. No, don't do that. Okay. Totally forgot about. Um, totally forgot about uh, what we did the other week because it was the other week for me this is bad okay so let's see that uh, let's say that a p p x times equals one yeah but that's gonna move everything not the center of the waves how do you how can we move the waves around? Any help? This is going to be PY. Nah, I'm drawing a blank here. So, do, 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 do. 
I think should be done on the yeah I think it should be done with d dot x times equals 10 I mean 2 maybe save that's too much what's happening there no 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 ah drawing a blank here so let's see let's see what we did the other day because I just forgot length let's see where we move the center of this Huh? Okay, yeah, we have a center. Okay, we use the distance function. So we need to say this first float d instead of this let's use the distance function distance from a position to a center yeah totally forgot about all this stuff so let's create a vector position which is gonna be equals to p and vector center is gonna be equal to a channel vector center and what we have so far is nothing because we need to create the attributes okay so now we can move it over there let's put it in the corners and we need another one from this side now so let's create another one so let's create uh, float uh, d2 maybe and let's copy this parameters but we need another center so let's create another vector center 2 uh, it's gonna be called center 2 like that then we could do just uh, multiply multiplies equals the uh, d2 save see if we did good center no that's not working okay so let's move this back yeah that's we okay so let's let's do the same things for d2 times the channel the channel that we're scaling actually just copy this i don't want to write everything Actually, we, we just need to just do the same thing. I don't know why am I doing this thing. Like that, I guess. And then do times sine of d2. Eh. Or plus. Nah, times. Okay, let's see what's happening. Let's see what this guy is. This is not moving because we have a, uh, ah, here's the error. Should be center two. So now, mm, no. 
now it's not working anyway it should uh, plus 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 yeah not sure what I'm doing any guys uh, any guys have uh, an idea there out there Let me see if I don't. Do oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Let's see. Uh, position is just the P. Center two. It's center two. Yes. D2 Maybe I'm gonna try to do the same thing again Let's see if that works Okay, it seems like now it's something's happening Three point eight and minus three. Okay, I think that's what should happen. Times two. <laughs> okay. Minus time. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe this is wrong. As you can see, this is w the second one I did. It's weird. I don't know why the second one is weird. No, it looks all right. It's a little bit weird. So there. Yeah, it's working. It's working, I think. Yeah, it is working. It's just adding on top of each other, which so it looks weird. I guess. So let's see what else. Let's uh, try to build some of the sample with bobs. No, we're not gonna try that. Let's go to day four. Woo! We can go through day three exercises if we need to later all right so this is gonna stop and this is day three stay out of my way and this is gonna be day three two okay let's save the scene Guys are very quiet. Say stuff. Come on, talk. All right, so let's start with a new scene. It's gonna s save us. Ah, I saved that thingy. Save it. Now save us. It's just about to lose that. Day four. So day four says tramp. Oh, the tramp. Shrimp, nothing to do with shrimp. Okay, tram can be a much more direct and visual way to shape things. You have used the curves tool in Photoshop. This will be intuitive. Uh, the ramp gives you a little, a little zero one graph. You can click on the graph to edit the shape, and etc. You can map a variable to that. The fall goes from zero to one. Okay. All right, Just tells you how you whatever the things you can do with the ramp. But now we can do it uh, over here. So attribute wrangle, wrangle, and this is gonna be day four. 
So let's start with that code. Uh, external editor. Okay, load d equals the length of uh, p again, and uh, d is gonna be equal times equals a channel called scale, and dollar, I mean attribute point why it's gonna be a shrimp with an a name it's gonna be named my ramp and with a position which is gonna be D the time we are not gonna use here apparently so we save that and let's see what we get here once we click here uh, we get that nothing fancy seems like right now right this is working right I don't know I don't see much happening here just like that Woo! okay Let's see what else. So we specify the name of RAM, but it could be anything. And we'll use the D, the axis. Uh, did I copy this wrong? Everything seems all right. Okay. Invert the ramp. Boink. Let's invert the ramp. I don't see wave patterns. It says that uh, you should get a single white wave that fits the entire grid, which is which I'm not getting. Should that I oh okay I, I didn't have any scale here duh sorry for that okay now I see the the patterns duh that was my mistake so now if we move this yeah now we're seeing the waves there we can shape this guy differently we can change the uh, method here and do something funky We can change this to cat roll to make it seem like we, we what we have before. So basically, we're kind of what we have before. We are ramp now. All right, so remember the ramp. Okay. I don't have any examples, Medi Boy, because we are just following this thingy right now. So there will be ways you could use this, but uh, we are not exploring that right now. Uh, time 
and uh, this is going to be for py and then it does dollar py times equals channel height okay now we need to create the channel height and give it some height because if I don't I'm not gonna see stuff again so we we're back to kind of the way we had the sign function but now we can control the shapes and stuff you can see now we got weird things and stuff there so you, if you you could use this for a lot of things you're going to do ripples and water or uh motion graphics effects something like that something like that i don't know nothing coming to mind right now Okay, so let's try doing what it's trying to do, like just clipping the wave differently, linear, linear. I changed these guys to cut more roll, but. Yeah, you can scale this guy. Have something weird going on here. Maybe give it more divisions. I'm not even sure what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so that's just using the uh, the RAM to control the deforming thingy. Uh. While mapping a linear ramp to values and on the rack, you can shape any input into a value, taking the perfect wave generated by sign, and clipping and shaping the results. So, okay. Let's see what we're going to do now. Let me do another one of this. Four or two. Let's see, now we are going to do the sign that we did before, but now we're going to control it with a ramp. So basically add on top of what we did before, uh, delete the parameters and I'm going to do expression editor. I just copy this so it's faster because we are just losing time here and let's uh, do that give it some scale give it some height now we have we have a way a wave a wave sine wave there that we can control with the ramp whenever I can select this you can see now we can control this we can Inver this, I guess, kinda. Give it some points in the middle to make it weirder. So it's basically just multiplying the sine wave with this ramp and, and just giving you different shape, shaping options there. So now it says that, uh, Just in a clip for some reason. I didn't see any 
I just clipping it maybe to you can see the shape there. Okay. Okay, Matt. So Note that I took the sign from between minus one to one and fit it to zero to one. Yeah, okay. Da, 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 da. Just normalize the values, okay. Create a saw two waves. Let's see the exercises. Uh, let's see if uh, you guys have any questions. Uh, concrete examples to use this in a project. Well, basically you're uh, you're learning how to use all the parts of of BEX right now. And once you use, when you learn how to use them, you, you just can apply it to your different projects. But we're basically just taking small steps to learning this. Uh, question off topic. I have seen the uh, Maya libeling, yes. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to do that. It, it should be able to do uh, the live link uh, uh, plugin for from Houdini to Unreal Engine, but I don't know if people are gonna use it because people don't wanna use Houdini for animation for some reason, I don't know. Okay, so exercises. Uh, create a saw to wave, triangle wave, square waves, okay. We could do that with the first one actually. And I already did that. Uh, square waves. Already did it. square waves. Uh, we can do triangle waves just by lowering this guy. Uh, and saw two waves is basically the same, isn't it? can do another one here so that's sawtooth waves uh, affect color in this way to make a shape pulse with pleasing colors affect color we sh could just uh, put color here instead of that uh c d no no cd for me c d x maybe there's some polygon selected there not really cool we could put position to the color position y but we uh matt wants this to pulse Uh, 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 I don't really know how to do that. Affect uh, color in this way to make a shape pulse with pleasing colors. Hmm, pleasing colors. Maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. Nope. Uh, now, and then when I, when I'm here with you guys live, I, I kind of get more, uh, I don't know, stuck. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see what we can do to have different colors. Color is going to be based on position. Position. But that's not moving. 
Ba -ba 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 time. Uh, let's try sign of the. It's kind of getting there. It's kind of getting there. CD dot uh, Y. Uh, I'm broken my own rule. RG. Let's put sign or let's put cosine of the here. Okay, that's getting funky. CD green. Oh, blue. Let's put the sign of time here. Okay, now we have pulsating colors. Cool. I did it. <laughs> All righty. That, that's good. Do these four different color components already did. Affect color and position in different ways. Already did, actually. Uh... Let's see it on the pig head. Let's go to the pig. To the pig. Now that looks weird. Let's do it on the position. Uh, that shouldn't be there. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Where it's the pig position Y okay <laughs> That looks pretty weird the freaking pig did All right, so what else is on the exercises? Uh, okay, no, that's good Guess we're done with this today, right? You guys are kind of uh, really serious today, but okay. Point times that. Okay, now that's looking better. And scale. Oh, scale is here. Height. Let's make it. Height is not working actually, but we can control it maybe here. And just for kicks, I'm gonna add normals here. So yep. That's how it does to, for the pig. You can use this for a uh, DJ. <laughs> Woo! Now that pig is suffering. Uh, okay. I guess we're done with this guy. All right, let's go to day five. Let's see how day five goes. Alrighty, day five. Let's save this scene. Let's stop this. Save. Save us. Day five. The main point here is that you're learning what you are actually going through. So I'm not reading everything. So you should actually go through the text and understand what's happening here. So modulo is a really important thing 
it's used a lot so you should actually take uh, close attention to the that attribute wrangle just make that shortcut for that one uh, everyone understand that but uh, modulo surprises people okay so let's try with the modular thingy and see if we can understand what's happening here what's the shortcut all control e all control e there we go uh, so let's uh, we're going back to the point position y and pt num uh, modulo 5 and we get that it's basically just every uh, point that is divisible by 5 gets lifted I think But yeah, it's uh, all right. Let's see what's happening. What what is not divisible by five gets goes on the ground. I don't know. I don't know how to explain a modulo. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So if if the uh, result of being divided by five it's zero. It, uh, it just gives you zero. So it gives you the reminder. One divided by five, it's what, five? Two divided by five, it's what? I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I've I use it a lot, but I don't know how to explain it. Modulo works with fractional values too. Maybe you guys have a better understanding of what the modulo thingy does. Uh, so let's see what now this thing do does. Should be on the color. Color R. So we're getting some pulsing color with that. Like that. Uh, look, lots of effects in both setting up loops. Modulo gives you a way to set up inputs and outputs that loop. Yeah, it's basically dividing time and then gives you the, the remaining value here. And that's what the value there. Maybe we, maybe we could see it actually. Yeah, so here is the value that is returning. Whenever it's exactly divided, it gives zero. And then when it's not, it gives you that value that remains. That's what it's doing here. So you can see here it's divided by zero. And then here the reminder is that of the division. Then it's uh, going, 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 and then at what uh like about 18 goes back to zero and then go both goes back up so it's kind of doing like this boink 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 uh okay i th think i think that's clear but not so Making smooth things step via quantizing. Go back to the uh, trick. Let's see what, uh, what we're gonna do now. Let's comment that. Float D is gonna be equal to length. Length of the uh, point again. D uh, times equals channel scale. I think I'm doing a pretty bad job on explaining 
anything, but I'm learning this as well. Uh, we need to create the attribute and give it some scale. And we have that uh, cone again thingy. So yeah, we're getting smooth values because D is being multiplied after each point, I guess. If we remove everything after the decimal place, you get this. So you get just like a step value. Okay, so you you divide multiply by a fraction to get uh, smooth values, and then it says you you are just then uh, divide to get the the values down. I guess so. Let's uh, complete the operation here. Scale. Then we do float f. Okay. <laughs> My dog is all uh, wet. He likes to play with water. Uh, factor float F. Then we divide that to get the uh, stepping that he's trying to do. And then D equals trunk. I don't really know what trunk does. I never use this uh, function trunk. Then d it's uh, equals multiplied by f d, and then we get get nothing. Oh, we need to create the factor and make this bigger maybe. And now, yeah, that looks cool. That looks pretty cool. And see now we can we have this kind of a step in uh, cone. So instead of having the values just being smooth, we are stepping over the values. So that's that's cool. Looks cool. Looks cool. If we give it a sign value here of dollar time, we can get an animation, right? Nope. Sign of frame. Now that works. It's going the other way. Cool. We can multiply this. Point 0.1 to make it. No, that's going to make it slower. Let's make it 10. <laughs> Rip, whoop, extends and extends, extends and extends. Okay, let's stop playing with this, but it's fun. Uh, scale of 1. Now, let's say faking trunk with a shrimp. Now we're going to try to do it with a ramp. And yeah, I guess the, the trunk function means trunk it, but I've never seen that function before. I never used it before, actually. So let's uh, comment all this stuff and just start blank over here did I no nope. let's do it here again the it's the scale or pre scale saying now let's create another node actually 
So let's just undo, undo, save, save, and let's create a new node. Leave this one alone. This is day five, day five. Let's create a new node. It's a new node. It's a new day. Okay. Now in this one, we're going to leave that. We're going to have a pre-scale. We're going to have a ramp. Let's remove all this stuff. The shramp. <laughs> shramp. Uh, my step stepped ramp. And let's put D as the value. And what else do we need here? D times equal shadow post scale. Okay, so we have that. Let's delete the attributes and create what we need. Pre-scale and post-scale. We have this. Which is basically representing the ramp as at the moment. At the moment. But now if uh, we do change this to constant. And this guy to constant. This guy to constant. And this guy to constant. Now we can do the same thing, but with a ramp, which is cool, I guess. We can even do something different like that. Okay. And it's doing basically the same. And we can control these guys and all that funky things. Okay. Alrighty. So now we are at the exercises part. Try the different interpolation modes of the points of the ramp. I uh, kind of already did. Using interpolation, see how few points you can use to define a sine wave. Okay. Uh, think of other inputs you can use to drive the ramp. Components of a, of B, components of CD or N, current time or, or current frame. Uh, okay. Let's try time. Let's see what time does. And let's see what time does for this ramp, actually. Let's put time here. Oh, that's going to be weird. It just moves. <laughs> it just moves up and down. Uh, let's try normal. does nothing or normal y let's see if the normal y does anything nope let's try let's try let's see we don't have any color so it's not gonna do anything so nah. We don't have a good setup for this. <laughs> Just moving it up. It doesn't look good. Let's see what it does for the pig head. Yeah, doesn't look good. Alrighty. So, no, not really good, but we can see the, uh, the pig. How it looks uh, with this kind of ramp <laughs> looks all weird. 
All right. So, I think that's gonna be it for now. And I don't know. Do you guys think we should keep going with this stuff? Because we are on dead day five. There's like 15 days to go. And I don't think this is going like super fun. I don't know. It, it might not be doing, not, might not be helping you in any way. Uh, and I get stuck sometimes and uh, people complain when I don't know how to do stuff because I really don't know because I've never done this before. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not great to see this in a video. Just me doing this, having issues and stuff. Maybe just do it yourself and, uh, and ask questions if you need to. I don't know. Tell me if you want me to continue with this stuff because I don't know. It got kind of boring today, actually, <laughs> at the end of the day, because uh, I didn't know how to do some stuff and me thinking about stuff doing here live. It's, it's just I don't know. I think it's boring for you. Uh, but all right, I think I'm going to be done for today and just to finish, uh, since Bob is a really good friend of mine, I'm gonna do what he wants. Uh, let's create a geometry and let's create a tube. So, Bob wants to uh, flare, a, flare a tube. So, if let's give it some columns like this if you just wanted to do there's a few ways to do it Bob if you want to use a lattice you can use a lattice but you don't have to use a lattice uh, you can just use the old twist top as well and the twist top has a linear Taper or tapper. I don't know how that's pronounced and then you can do that But it kind of does it in one axis. It's, it's kind of weird So that's that might be one way, but The other way should would be maybe just to do it by hand uh, as well like just select the points and scale them down and then uh, raise the the soft radius here and make it linear and then just do it like that I don't know that's one way that don't scale it in the in the y-axis just in the C and uh, the C the X and C axis and then it will give you that if you use this guy uh, that's another way if you want to use the lattice then you just uh, use it here from the uh, from the shelf tool click it select the points enter and then it creates the setup for you one day there we go creates the setup for you and then you just select uh, here in click on this guy uh, select the points just S2 select the points of the lattice uh, first if you're just gonna flare it let's remove divisions that's the divisions in the y-axis put it to what are these divisions get away so since we don't want too much divisions why is this thing not changing Weird. We just want one and one. Why are you not changing? Oh, that is box? No, it's the same thing. Ah, there we go. It's changed. I don't know why it wasn't showing here. So just change it to one and one so you just have like a bonding box and then go to this guy. Select the points there and then scale those 
in or out depending on what you want to do here and there you go you can flare the tube as much as you want but you can also move it around the format with that uh, so yeah that's how you do it all right guys uh, this is gonna be it for today uh, I think nobody's here anymore <laughs> uh, all right no worries uh, I'll see you guys later uh, and that's it I think this is gonna be the last of the Bex uh, videos all right bye bye <laughs>